Hey there, fiery ones. So, at the time being, time of recording, I'd noticed that only 1.6% of CK3 players have actually played through to the end date. So, I thought, just in case anybody's sitting around wondering if it's worth their time to play all the way through to the end of the game, that I would do a quick video to show you what happened. So this is my this was my first ever playthrough. Basically, I started as Denmark in 1066. I used the same kind of exploit, if you can call it that, the same tactic with Denmark as you could do in CK2, which was basically to create some mega alliances because you've got so many kids in 1066. That allowed me to use the claims that you have on Norway and England. I think I just got in the war for England, or I can't remember which one it was, England or Norway, right at the start. Uh, just got the claim in just as the opening character died, so my son continued, won that. Created the Empire of Danelaw, which you can once you've got that land. And with the Empire of Danelaw, then expand out, and you no longer really need your allies so much. So basically, this game was going quite nicely. Uh, I got elected to the Holy Roman Empire position even though um, I was just kind of attacking them and conquering lands from them so when I did that I destroyed the Dane Law Empire title and pretty much ended up with a kind of split in Europe between the Holy Roman Empire and the Byzantines um, and it was my first playthrough so perhaps could have expanded a little bit further and, and quicker um, and then in the last couple of characters, when I knew things were kind of ending, I started messing about a bit and, and trying to get lunatic uh, profiles and that kind of thing. And that kind of led up to everything disintegrating. So you can see on the map that France and Norway had broken away. Um, I was reduced by this point to being the king of Hungary, uh, just the way that the dynasties had worked. But I recorded the end of the game because I knew the end date was coming up because I thought, actually, it seems, according to Steam, that not many people have played through to the end. So I just thought I'd just record the end of the game. And obviously, spoilers alert that this is going to show up what comes up at the end of the game. Lifestyle-wise in this game, because it was the first one, I was experimenting with a few different things. I think I got in the habit of trying to max out like all the intrigue on one character or all the diplomacy on one character. What I've done on games since, because this was a few weeks ago now, what I've done on the, a few times since is to mix and match a bit more. So I think if you're going for a learning or a, trying to get a, perhaps reform the religion, you want to be deep on the on the third track of the learning policy, but then maybe switch over to diplomacy and get things like the pedagogy rating I think this is on entry on learning but then switch over to diplomacy and get the levels for uh, your kids get the levels for your kids getting points etc anyway obviously Crusader Kings 3 is a lot of fun um, I've had a few games since this one I haven't yet paid for the expansion pack. I've kind of told myself when I got Crusader Kings free, the first time it had a price reduction, I think in the January sale after it had come out, um, I didn't want to pay for all the add-ons. I, I, I got quite deep into CK2 with a lot of the add-ons, but I always waited for the add-ons to be not full price. Um, I might just try and avoid buying any add-ons to CK3. I'll, I'll see what they come out with. The, the, the flavour pack for the Norse, even though I like playing as Norse characters, um, hasn't really interested me. I don't think I've actually had a Norse game yet. I've, in terms of other achievements, I've done the Portugal achievement and a few others. So this is the end. As you can see, it comes up with the end, <laughs> just to tell you that, and just highlights what's happened to your dynasty but in terms of is it worth playing through to the end of the game well really it's just the same kind of card that you get when one of your characters dies obviously you can look back through your family tree the same as you can at any point in the game but um, overall relatively limited in terms of what you get as an end game it'd be nice I always thought with CK2 it would be awesome if there was some kind of post-game map 
tracking like you had in Civilization or in some of the Civilization games. Or maybe a, the ledger that was in CK2 if you sort of got access to the ledger in CK3 at the end of the game and you see some graphs of progress or when you've built up particular things. I mean, it's quite nice you can see obviously where the dynasty sort of changes and things um, through your current titles so that obviously Hungary wasn't Danish uh, at one point and I managed to do that and then there's the different details of the different characters. It's quite interesting in this game that actually one of the characters I didn't particularly like was the one that really conquered the most land. Um, he didn't have the best traits but this happened to be the kind of period where the empire was at the right stage. I think generally speaking across this game and some of the ones that I've played with um, Irish Counts and Iberia and I think that's about all the ones I've done really. Oh, also the Arpads crossing the crossing the Carpathians uh, achievement as well. I think the, the sort of killer point really is when you get to about 10,000 men. That's the kind of point when you can really start branching out and conquering people. My current game that I'm playing is with the Roman Empire and I'm up to about 50,000 men. Pretty much got all of uh, Western Europe and North Africa uh, sewed up. There's a few bits in Frankia, East Frankia and modern day Morocco that I don't have but all in all uh, it's pretty much done. So all the way back there to King Sven you can see as you can click on them to access what the state of play was for them. Uh, that's always a little bit tricky I think with the way that it works because you know, there's things that happen to them during their lifetime that are not there when they're dead. Um, obviously you can't quite remember exactly some of the characteristics or stats that they had that made them useful characters. So I say if you're looking for a good start game for Crusader Kings I'd say, definitely say Denmark in 1066 is a strong one. It's probably not one of the obvious ones. Uh, you probably maybe go for England or Win Conqueror in 1066 but actually as in CK2 I think CK, uh, in CK3 Denmark because of the amount of alliances you can get with your children in that opening character um, it's quite easy to expand quickly as I say my son was the one that could become Emperor of the Dame Law and then we've carried on through pretty aggressive play most of the time once you became the as I say the Holy Roman Empire actually voted me in partly because it just completely splintered partly due to wars with me but also internal wars that splintering uh, meant that the tech skill or the character skill to increase your opportunity for vassalizations is really powerful. It's a really good one in that kind of situation because a lot of people will happily just come over and be peaceful vassals and you can expand very quickly that way. Um, if you, if for example, in that situation because I was the rightful uh, ruler of those territories um, and they'd just broken away from the HRE at some point or another. So yeah, so nothing too great if you're, you know, if you've maybe got a big empire in the 1300s and you're wondering whether it's worth sort of the slog to get to the end of the game. The answer to that question is probably not so much. But as I say, I thought I'd just do this video because I couldn't actually see an easy answer to that question beyond sort of articles saying, oh, well, the end, you get the end screen. Uh, I couldn't see any videos that were specifically looking for this. So I hope that helps, and do comment if there's anything else that you'd like to see, and I'll see if I'd maybe be able to do it.